getting prettier every day. I wonder if they'll like me in New York. Sure they will. You folks in New York are no different than the one we've been playing to in these tank towns. It's just that there's more of them. Tough somebody in the old west. Give me the range. Me smell him something. Must be actors or buffaloes. Actors? Well, what do you know about that? What's the matter with actors? Ooh, right now, I can't think of a thing. They never have a cent, that's what. Hey, look, there are actors and actors. Our troops been playing to full houses ever since we left San Francisco. <laughs> Daddy likes to boast a little. You see, business has really been awful. No, we... <laughs> yeah, it's just my mm. joking. I'll soon find out. You hear what the lady said? Business has been awful. What do you mean? We ain't going to get anything out of this after all the hard work we've done? Oh, I don't know. A little entertainment might be relaxing. We open in Rimrock tonight. We'd be glad to have you in the audience. Yeah, but I'm afraid Sheriff Wyeth of Rimrock uh, wouldn't like to have us visit this town. Why not uh, make a few monkey shines here, eh? <laughs> yeah. Why not? You couldn't ask for a more intelligent audience than my men. Who are they? Okay. <laughs> I see what you mean. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sure. Let me see who's first. Neil. <laughs> oh, oh, I feel a little... Oh. Oh. There you go again. You've hit more roads in the Overland stage. Come on, Neil. Snap out of it. May I have the honor? Is this a dagger which I see before me? The handle toward my hand? Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not. And yet I see thee still. Ah! 
there's no such thing. It is the bloody business. If he went into the coach. Just a minute. Get your hands up and keep them up. And that's a very dangerous thing for you to do. We're not afraid of you. We're not just anybody you're holding up. Shh, Katie, Katie. Get into that coach, all of you. Get into that coach, I say. Hey, what's the idea of letting them go? Or maybe you're figuring on seeing that show in Rimrock. Who knows? So this is Rimrock, eh? Well, it doesn't look any different than any other cowcatcher town we've played. Uh, you should be glad you're alive to see this one. I thought for a while there, those bandits would shoot us all up. <laughs> they wouldn't dare. I was just getting mad enough to... Uh, to what? Well, to give them a piece of my mind. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I thought. Well, you could have put my name in bigger type. Remind me to speak to the man that I... Well, what's going on? What is this? Get... Jim Wyatt, Jim Wyatt, Jim Wyatt. Never heard of him. Must be a medicine show. He ain't no actor, mister. He's our sheriff. Yeah? Well, what do you ever do to rate such billing? Ooh, nothing much except clean up the whole town single-handed. You don't say? Yes, sir. He's the greatest hero in this part of the state and the best shot in the whole West. Why, he could split a blade of grass in the cow's mouth at 100 yards. See this? Yeah. That's for getting Rip Conroy and his gang. See that one over there? That's for plugging Jim Henry out in front of the saloon. One shot and it was all over. This is for running King Carlos and his gang out of town. King Carlos? The toughest hombre in these parts, but he didn't scare Jim Wyatt none. He didn't scare us either. Say, I sure would like to shake that sheriff by the hand. Well, it looks like you might be doing that right quick. I've peered down a thousand gun barrels in my life, but this is the first time I ever felt like turning tail. Sure you won't be changing your mind, Mrs. Sims? Not on your chin tight. Sheriff, do your duty. Which one of you folks answers to the name of Willie Wells? Right here in the flesh, Sheriff. And I'm mighty proud to be meeting up with you. Well, I reckon you won't be in a minute or so. I'm sorry, Mr. Wells, but the Opera House won't be available to you. What? The Opera House is civic property. The Rimrock Women's Club successfully petitioned to have your show banned. Your name was on that petition, Hank. Well, I have to do what the missus says. But why? What's the matter with our show? The last time a show like yours played here, my husband ran away with a dyed blonde. But our show isn't like that. If you'd care to see a rehearsal, we... The matter is closed. Come along, Charity. Prudence. I'm sorry, folks. It's their opera house. I'm just playing hogtied. Get out of there, you thieving rabbit! Looks like you're losing your aim, Sheriff. Well, uh, I, uh, I didn't want to hurt the poor little bunny. I, I, uh, I thought he might be yours. Well, <clears throat> goodbye, Faith. Never knew Sheriff White had such a big heart. Or has he? Well, where do we go from here? <laughs> That's all right. Rimrock isn't the only town between here and New York. There's lots of other places that like to show our play. I still say we should have took off around the horn. Where's the professor? Go to it, Macbeth. Huh? Why does he suffer this rude knave to knock him about the sconce with a dirty shovel and will not tell him of his action of battery? <laughs> Macbeth found him, all right. Wait here, Pop. I'll be right back. Katie, are you going in there alone? Why not? This is business. Well, what's this world coming to? My own daughter going to a place where they serve liquor. Please believe me, our show's different. Now, look here. That's what they said the last time. And what happened? The audience busted up all the glassware and the silver dollar. Nope, ain't taking no more chances. But surely people in Rimrock like to see real entertainment just like they do every place else. Well, what's the matter with Maybell here? The best bustle tossing nightingale in the West. I'm sure she's very capable. But if you'd just let me give you an example of our show. Do you know Don't Go Making Speeches? Don't go making speeches. 
Thank you. Ain't you afraid going out to live in those papers all by yourself? Why should I be? Why, this is a wild country, and somebody's liable to get fresh. It might touch your ankle or something. Who knows? And someone might lose one of their arms. Who knows? Show folks sure ain't what they used to be. Faith, I'm surprised at you. That's no way for a young lady to act. I can't help it. I've never seen anybody get out of a buckboard that way. Uh, may I help you? No, thank you. I'm perfectly capable of taking care of myself. Well, I'm quite sure of that, but you might have a little difficulty repairing your buckboard. Buckboard? I uh, believe that wheel does belong with the others. Oh, I don't want to put you to too much trouble, but... Well, I haven't had much experience with buckboards. No, I... it's no trouble at all. I'll have it fixed in no time. A remarkable contribution to progress, the wheel. Few people realize the fact, but its invention practically marked the start of our civilization. That is, civilization as we know it. You don't say. As some scholars think that it started with the invention of the alphabet, but I don't agree with that school of thought. With the wheel came travel, and man began to learn new things. He discovered new worlds and broadened his viewpoint. I'm sure he did. He can't help talking that way. He's a school teacher. A school teacher? But don't let that bother you. He's very nice, really. I'm afraid Faith is just a little bit prejudiced. You see, I'm the only teacher in Rimrock. I don't know how to show my appreciation, but if you and Faith would like to come to the variety show tonight, Gosh! I'd like to give you some passes. Oh, I'd like to see your show very much, but I'm afraid it's impossible. Why? Well, after all, the town has entrusted the care of its youngsters into my hands, and it's only natural that they should expect my conduct to be above reproach. What kind of a show do you think we're putting on? All we want to do is make people laugh a little and cry a little, enjoy themselves. I'm not trying to moralize or preach or anything like that. It's just that I... Mr. High and Mighty School Teacher, so you said. With the wheel, man began to better himself, learn new things, discover new worlds, broaden his viewpoint. Well, why don't you go out and get yourself a wheel? What did I do? You don't know much about women, do you? Back new, Mr. Jonathan. Well, everyone in town knows about our show tonight. You know, Miss Katie, I've been thinking over, and I've decided I'm plumb touch letting you talk me into put on this burlicue. It's no burlicue. I assure you our show will be a great success. Now, remember, no refreshments served during the performance tonight, as you agreed. But between acts, it's uh, your privilege to invite the patrons to the bar. I'm sure you'll double your business. Oh, all right, but I think I'll see my doctor and tell him I'm crazy. <laughs> Oh, Pa! Oh, this is no time to bother me, Katie. I'm trying to get this darned old machine fixed. We'll be called this a magic lantern. Must have been local. I do. How do you do? My name's Mayfield. I'm the mayor of Rimrock. Huh? Yeah. Uh, who's the proprietor of this here turkey here? Yeah. Turkey? Yeah. I am the impresario 
And this is no turkey. This is a production. All right. Well, Chuck, it don't make no difference what you call it. There's a little matter of a license to be taken care of here. License? Oh, yes, 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 yes. The dog. Dogs are not in my department. No? No. It'll cost you folks exactly $100 if you want to perform here in Rim Rock. $100? Oh, hold up. That's what it is. Now, listen here, young lady. You ain't got the proper respect. I represent the law here. And unless you folks pay up the $100, you might just as well move on. Uh, of course, we, we might come to some little arrangement. I mean, just between the three of us. So... You're still up to your old shenanigans, eh, Dave? Yeah, well, now, don't get riled, Jim. I, mm. I was just explaining to the folks here uh, the Rimrock Law, that's all. I... That law ain't been on the books in years, and you know it. Mm. I'm giving you fair warning, Dave, if you get mixed up into anything that even smells shady, this town will give me a new plaque and a mighty small one for getting rid of a mighty small weasel. <laughs> oh, that, that's fine. I'm... <clears throat> Well, I guess I'd better be getting along. I've <clears throat> got some business to take care of. Now, oh, no, no, don't get, don't worry, Jim. No, it's, it's got nothing to do with the law. Uh, <clears throat> well, folks, <clears throat> welcome to Rim Rock. Bye. I guess I took care of that. <clears throat> I guess we must have had you all wrong when we first met you, Mr. Wyatt. I hope you like our performance, Sheriff. You're coming, of course. Oh, I reckon I'll like it fine. I'm kind of an easy mark. But this town's kind of fussy. If they don't like a performance, they got a heap of ways of showing it. I know, but you can take care of that, you know, just like you did with the mayor, hmm? Well, I can keep law and order, but you just can't go around stepping on people's high spirits. Gets them all riled up the wrong way. Then they really get ornery. Ah. And then I gotta start using these. <laughs> Please. Thank you. <clears throat> How many? Uh, one, please. In the back. Hello, Professor. Hi, Mr. School Teacher. What's the lesson for tonight? Look out for those pretty <laughs> girls. They're liable to keep you after school. <laughs> The town's having fun with the school teacher. The who? The school teacher. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know? Say, Katie, it's showtime and I can't find Professor Moffat. What's the matter? What are you gonna do? Go to work, that man. <laughs> It is a foul thing when a cur cannot keep himself in all company. <coughs> Farewell, makers. What did that scarecrow call me? You got me. Set him up, Charlie. Three bourbons. How does it feel being undecided of footlights, Maybell? I'll tell you more about that later. Come on, Charlie. How about those drinks? Sorry, Maybell. The show's about to start. We can't serve no liquor during the performance. Oh, what a night.
gentlemen, your attention, please. I take great pleasure in introducing to you a voice. Oh, and what a voice! The sensation of the Barbary Coast. None other than the one and only Neil Matthews. Ooh. You have him. We don't want him. <laughs> huh? If you want to see some real talent, we'll show it to you. Go on, Maybell, get up there. Now, wait a minute. The performance isn't over yet. Oh. There's still more to come. You don't think we have any talent, eh? What's wrong with Rimrock? Go ahead, Maybell. Don't let him bluff you. We want Maybell. Yeah, we want Maybell. Now, wait a minute. Listen, listen to me just a minute. Ladies you? and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to present a little lady you all know and love. Maybell Watkins, the pride of the silver dollar. <laughs> Gents cry out when I go by, oh, you kid. Tip their hats and wink their eyes, oh, you kid. Don't think that I encourage them, of course I never did, but still they say I love my wife, but oh, you kid. I'm the belle of all the town, oh, you kid. In my new Parisian gown, oh, you kid. The girl of whom the other girls would like to be well rid. The men all say, I love my wife, but all you think. What do you have next, folks? Uh, some professional entertainment, that's what. Listen, Derry, I ain't no amateur. Turn. Let me at her. I'll scratch her oh, eyes off. Give her a chance. Who does she think she is? What do you want to do, hug it all? What's the matter, Carlos? You hard of hearing? I'm giving you 10 seconds to go through them swinging doors and get out of Rimrock.
Miss Wells. Miss Wells. Oh, now I'm really in a pickle. I didn't mean to hit you so hard. Miss Wells, you know, you're the most beautiful girl I've ever seen in my life. So you want to fight? I'll show you. Miss Wells, Miss Wells, Miss Wells. We're not in the silver dollar any longer. The fight's over? Well, we weren't doing too good, so I didn't think it was wise to wait around and see. Well, you just turn right around. We're going back. Nobody's going to break up my act and get away with it. Oh, who hit me? Well, people very often do strange things. Things that they'd never do under ordinary circumstances. No, it couldn't be. <laughs> oh. you, you're not angry? I think it's wonderful for you. Oh, you think I'm pretty stuffy, don't you? Well, after the way you acted this afternoon, I... Well, my job is very important to me. In this cow catcher town, we're just using it as a way stop. We're headed for New York. Well, I'm afraid that the theater and teaching are very different professions. Whatever you do, you've got to try for the top spot on the bill. You sounded like a pretty fine teacher this afternoon. You know, I bet nobody ever thought of those things you said about the wheel. <laughs> You could probably get a job teaching in a big city. Oh, I wouldn't like that. I want to stay here and teach where I'm really needed. This part of the country is still young. It's gone through some pretty violent growing pains, like gun battles, lawlessness, vigilantes, but somehow it's managed to weather all of them. Now it's time for it to grow up, be strong and healthy. I don't see what teaching and reading and writing has to do with being strong and healthy. Well, it has everything to do with it. If people learn to read and write, they think. And when they think no one can put anything over on them, not for very long. You know, what you say sounds like it's very important. Oh, it is important. A very beautiful part of our country. Oh, <laughs> I've been talking too much. satisfactorily why you're wearing that cork plaster. Well, it was a very unusual type accident. Does everybody have the same unusual type of accident? I suggest you find a better explanation, Mr. Howell. Well, I didn't want you to become upset. That's why I didn't tell you. You see, last night, King Carlos and his men came back to town, and there was an awful brawl in the Silver Dollar. Th that's why they're guarding everything. And just what were you doing in the Silver Dollar? You had an invitation to my party, if I remember correctly. Well, it wasn't something I had planned. It was just one of those unpredictable... Carlos has been spotted near the Fuller place. There's no telling where he'll strike next. But remember, he ain't given no warning like a rattler. Eh, there wouldn't have been all this fuss today if Carlos had been took last night like he should have been. Yeah, I never had no chance to get near him. Oh, shucks. It seems to me, Jim, that you had plenty of chances. Meaning what? Uh, oh, well, nothing except that sometimes a man just can't handle his job. He uh, uh, just gets a little too old. For Don't him. say that again. Oh, no, I didn't mean you, Jim. I was talking about, uh, well, well, any old man. Don't scare us easy, Dave, or you'll never grow old. Uh, I was just trying to teach you to back up what you say. Come on, let's be going to the meeting. Yeah. I have one announcement to make. The annual church social will be held in the church parlors next Friday afternoon from 2 to 4. Everybody is cordially invited. And now for the reading of the scriptures. Book of Matthew, chapter 19, 13th verse. Excuse me, Parson, I, I hate to interrupt. The last thing I want to be guilty of is sacrilege, but I want to warn every man to be on his guard. I know you can't carry your guns in here, but I, I want you to be able to get them fast. Well, just say the word, Sheriff. We can put back the service of might until this thing is settled. I'd take it as a blot on my record. If the Lord's work was held up one minute for a man like King Carlos, I ain't afraid of him. And I know you ain't. Go right on reading, Pa. Oh, Katie, haven't I always been a good father to you? Haven't I always done what you told me? What do you say we turn around and go right back? You didn't say anything about this when we first signed up with the troop. No, it ain't in our contracts. There's no use talking. We're all going to church. Oh, 
Now look, Katie, I don't do much complaining, but this is the darndest idea. It's important that we go. People have funny ideas about actors. They don't think we're respectable. Well, I don't care what they think. I'm not going in this church. How about you, Professor? Our ranks are broke and ruin follows us. What counsel give you? Whither shall we fly? You're all going to fly in this church, every last one of you. Except Macbeth. Parting is such sweet song. Then were they brought unto him, little children, that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer little children, and forbid them not to come unto me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> We're as popular here as a mule act. Shh. It might interest some of you folks to know that the service is going on at the front of the church as usual. Congregation will now sing hymn number 51. It's a mighty fine rendering of that hymn, Mom, and we thank you. Show folks don't come here as often as we'd like. Guess maybe we seem kind of standoffish, but we don't mean to be. In this church, everybody's welcome. Well, thanks a lot, Parson. We're not used to being so popular. <laughs> well, you won't get very far. The whole street's covered. Yeah, so I noticed. We didn't come here to cause any trouble, and there won't be any unless then what did you come for? Carla sent us to pick up Miss Katie Wells. Oh, just a moment. I don't see what all the fuss is about. I made an appointment with Mr. Carlos last night before the show. What? Just seems he sent an escort, that's all. Katie! Uh, I don't know why everyone's so shocked. Don't people in Rimrock make appointments? Uh, be back later, Pop. What's the matter? Why didn't you shoot? I was afraid of hitting the girl. Why, at that distance, we could have shot the buttons off of them bandits. Well, I just wasn't taking any chances. Well, I think it's Reem Rock that's taking the chances, keeping you on as sheriff. You've just outlived your job, that's all. Oh, maybe he's got a little touch of buck fever. Well, he never had before. I'm asking you for your badge, Jim Wyatt. We're electing a new sheriff tomorrow. There's no reason to go to all that trouble. 
If you want to get rid of Carlos, all you have to do is get rid of that actress. That's why he's here. Yes, we haven't had a bit of trouble with Carlos men till these show folks came to town. Guess maybe we've never had anybody pretty enough around here to attract some attention. Well, what's all the better? If you're going to stand out here, we might just as well finish the service. We ain't taken up the collection yet. Aren't you staying for the service, Mr. Howell? Oh, I gotta get off someplace alone. Or I can do some thinking. Mind if I tag along? She couldn't have wanted to go with King Carlos. It doesn't seem possible. Of course not. And pardon me for saying so, Mr. Howe, but as far as women are concerned, you don't know your P's and Q's. You don't even know your ABC's. Well, it appears like you're right, Faith, but what can I do? I don't know, Mr. Howe, but if I was a smart school teacher, I wouldn't be asking a pupil of mine what to do. And another thing, Mr. Howe. Yes, Faith? While you're deciding what to do, for a little while anyway, I'd forget that the pen is mightier than the sword. King Carlos, the big bad man of the West. I wasn't afraid of you before, and I'm not afraid of you now. Oh, rather a spirited young lady. <laughs> Maybe that's why I thought it was worthwhile going after you. Going after? Do you call sending that mangy-looking group of mongrels to drag me out of church going after a girl? Well, to tell the truth, was Sheriff Wyatt I was after. A little trick of mine. But when me and my men decided to leave this place, I thought it was about time to let him know who was the boss. I'm not a bit interested in you or your plans, Mr. Carlos. But I'm sure the people of Rimrock will be glad to know they've seen the last of you. Well, perhaps when you find out that I'm getting on your side of the fence, you will think differently. <laughs> you know, the West used to be each man for himself. Take what you could and then hope that you live long enough to enjoy it. But now, with these trains snorting across the country and uh, nice people like you traveling back and forth, the West has a chance to put on his Sunday clothes and really go places. So, I thought the boys and I would go along too. Right, boys? That might be your aim, King, but we're looking at things a lot different. What do you mean? Well, those trains you're talking about coming from California. They're packing a lot of gold, you know. Mm. So we're figuring on getting our share of it. I still give the orders around here. I'm sorry I got you mixed up in this, Miss Wells. Better be getting back to town. Wells. I sent her back to town. That's the healthiest thing you ever did. Say, if you ain't got nothing to do for the next five minutes, I could welcome your company. You are pretty handy with those guns, eh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that ought to make you a very important man in Rim Rock. Well, goodbye, amigo, and thanks so much for the help. Oh, you're not going to leave me. Now you've taken care of my men. There's nothing else for me to do. Oh, but... Adios. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Now I am in a pickle. Gosh. Seven of them.
Oh. King Carlos's men are here. Where? Now, now, don't get excited. Don't worry. They, they won't cause any more trouble. I got them all right here in the wagon. In the wagon? This will make you the biggest hero Rimrock's ever had. They'll give you a plot, erect a monument, and everything. Oh, that's just a trouble. All this time I've been telling folks they should put away their guns and take to reading books. And now when they find out about this, they, they won't believe anything I tell them. You can't let that happen. Faith, you got me into this. You got to figure a way out. Well, how many of them are there? Seven. Seven? Well, maybe we could lay them out on the desert and pray for a sandstorm to cover them up. Oh, Faith. If there were only one or two of them, but seven. Sorry, Mr. Howell, but I'm stumped. I suppose the correct thing to do is take them to Sheriff Wyatt. You mean at Sheriff Wyatt? Of course. Of course what? Well, they took Sheriff Wyatt's badge away from him because he couldn't shoot. Now's our chance to get his badge back and make him a bigger hero than ever. Come on! Yeah, let's go. Where do you want them? Faith, will you please make up your mind? This one's getting awful heavy. Drape right over the banister and let the Indian lean against the bar. Oh. I sure feel funny taking credit for something I didn't do. But this is the best thing in the whole world for Mr. Howell, you and the whole community. Well, if you put it that way... And I'm mighty thankful to you, Todd, for what you're doing. Oh, Sheriff, it's me that should thank you. But remember, don't ever let a word of this get out, please. It had ruined me. Oh, not a word ever. Well, Faith and I gotta be getting along. Remember, give us time to make a clean getaway. Sure. Be sure and make it seem real. Well, you can count on me. Oh, what a night. to pull one too many jobs. I just cornered them in here. Yeah, there they are. Looks like they've been dead for hours. Huh? <clears throat> well, cart them off to the burying grounds. Are you hurt, Jim? Uh, one of them plugged me in the foot. about the silver dollar. It's an historic shrine. Well, it's still a saloon to me. But it's the place to go. Anybody who is anybody will be here at the unveiling. Well, all right, Matilda. But I think we should leave the girls outside. But all the men are inside. Come along, Charity, Prudence. Ladies, the best is none too good, and the drinks is on the house. I beg your pardon. <laughs> That's what really happened. But if Mr. Howell ever finds out I told you, he'll keep me after school for the next ten years. I won't tell, I promise, Faith. Honor bright? Honor bright. Say, Katie, please look, for the last time, will you change your mind? The wagon's all loaded, and with hard riding, we'll be able to put on our show at Valley Springs tonight. And they'll just love us at Valley Springs. No, Pop, we're going in the silver dollar. Uh, you're only inviting trouble. You know what they think of us here, and they'll insult you every chance they get. Pop, my mind's made up. 
Uh, my daughter of mine is getting more like me every day. Come on. Mr. Howell, look, look who's here. Oh, thanks, Faith. Mr. Mayor. Oh, how do you do, ma'am? Those show people are still in town. I thought you were going to do something about that. Oh, well, now I can't allow anything to interfere with the unveiling, ma'am. But I will take care of them afterwards. Well, I certainly hope so. They've caused Rimrock enough trouble as it is. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, could I have your attention just a minute, please? Uh, thank you. Now, folks, as you know, we're here today to pay homage to the outstanding citizen of Rim Rock and one of the great heroes of the West. Now, I'm talking about our own sheriff, Jim Wyatt. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> well, I'm mighty grateful to all you folks for the honor you've heaped on me. <laughs> but uh, I feel mighty guilty accepting it. Yes, I do. Because uh, there's someone else that should be up here in my place. Strange enough, the person I'm referring to is not a man, but a girl. And the girl I'm referring to is none other than that stage lady, Miss Katie Wells. Explain yourself, Jim. Hmm? Explain yourself. Oh. Oh. Uh, if Miss Wells, unknown to you folks, hadn't cooperated with me, and uh, Lord Carlos's men into my trap. I'd never got a shot at him. So, my hat's off to Miss Katie Wells. I'm, I'm not very good at words, but I'd like to show my appreciation in my own way. Maestro. Oh, 